<laughs> so this is this is old Betsy. This is Harvard Percy Maxim's rotary spark gap transmitter. This is the transmitter he used to generate CW up until around 1928. Now what we well what Hiram had done is he actually had this located in his basement and he would remotely control it from his living room. Now back then he was keying 110 live across the key. Uh, I'm not doing that anymore. For <laughs> <laughs> Although prior to the renovation '89, that's how we did it back then. We were keying 110 live across the key. So at that time, visitors had to kind of like stay away. From <laughs> and they still do. That's why we have the polycarbon front. But what I do now is I will be keying it from over there, but I send a 12 volt signal to a triac here, ah, okay. which puts about 100, puts 120 on the uh, high voltage transformer. That generates from 11 to 12,000 volts AC. That voltage is placed on these two points here through the condenser capacitor and one half of the oscillation transformer. Now this is the uh, four point armature is spinning at about 2,500 RPM and it comes very close to these two points without actually touching them. Essentially we're making like a very small spark plug. Okay. Because we're keying it with the Morse code key, the the air breaks down with the voltage and an arc is generated. Now depending upon the strength of the arc, that energy is coupled back to the oscillation transformer and if it's a strong arc, this light, which is wired on the output, will fire. You will be able to hear it as well as uh, see the arc as well. Now if you want to take a picture, feel free. Uh, this does not affect any electronic devices. I uh, just ask you to be mindful that this is a real old piece of equipment. Uh, it should be safe, but I wouldn't, you know, do one of these numbers. Right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems to work if you do something like that. I don't think Apple would warranty that. <laughs> no, probably not. No. What's eleven thousand volts? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to sneak by you there, and I'm just going to key it up, and uh, hopefully she's in a good mood because sometimes she gets kind of grumpy. And the two like, oil cups, is that to oil the bearings on the main arm yes. armature? Yes, right. The two oilers right on the top, uh, those are McCoy oilers, and they're just for the armature for the shaft there. That's all they did. Wow. Okay, let's see if she goes. There, there she goes. Actually, kind of soft will start to slightly deform. Yeah, that's so why we don't want to get that nice clean, clean point. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So what I normally have to do is I have to pull these things off, take them back to the lab, and regrind them, and to put a semi point on them. Those are not the original either. The actual ones that Harman used were, were full copper threaded rod. I still have those, but I replaced them with just regular, regular steel thread steel, and so I kind of. It kind of mushes up pretty quick after a couple of shots. Also in this room, this desk was Hiram Percy yep. Maxim's desk. Yes, this desk was used by... That's the actual Maxim. operating position. Well, uh, no, this was a desk that he had given. Oh, okay. We don't have any pictures of him sitting at this, unfortunately. But he had given this to some family friends decades ago. Okay, maybe like 100 years ago. And what they would do is they would just kind of give it to family members as they would pass it down. Well, in 2008, they pretty much ran out of family people to give it to. So they contacted us and said, would you like Hiram's roll-top desk? And there are some pictures, we just don't have them sitting at it. So they gave this desk back to us in 08. It did come in pieces, and we had to reassemble it. It has been repaired throughout the years, as we can tell. It's been refinished. Uh, the roll-top part actually still looks pretty good. And so I, I have to move some of my stuff around. I, I built this receiver, but I got to take it out and I can get this thing out and put the uh, the roll top down. Now we also have a few other items, and they're not on display kind of sort of just yet. But if you look underneath old Betsy, there is a uh, two heat kits. Oh yeah. 
and we have a shot of uh, this over here, you know, this the oh, shot right oh, down here. Oh, okay. Shows at least one of them that was in use here, and this was, yeah, it's right there, yep. Yeah. You mean the same very rig that... Uh, it's the same one, yes. Those were actually in our museum. And uh, I'm guessing, thankfully, that the guys, or when they redid the station over again, this equipment, they didn't discard it or sell it, rather, they just put it in storage. Those pieces were moved into our museum area. Where, where's your museum? Well, prior to 1999, our lobby area was one big museum. Oh. These display cases here, we had multiple display cases up, and all these pieces, parts were on display. So we had those two pieces inside those display cases. In May of 99, they redid the lobby. They farmed out a lot of these cases. Like, I got one. The lab has one. There's a few upstairs and downstairs, and pieces were moved into them. When you but do that's the tour this afternoon, there is a museum in the oh, sorry, building, me, the headquarters building. You'll get a chance to see that museum. Awesome. Am I in your shot, Steve? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, when you're done taking photos, let's come into the main part of the 